Next up, a Londoner's Sarah Slightholm and Beth Chilton. Good luck, girl. The pair are pitching their fledgling fashion business and have designs on one dragon in particular, global clothing tycoon Tuka Suleiman. I think we're after a bit of Tuka time, just because of his great <laughs> manufacturing contacts. I think he'll really get our products and understand our products and probably be the dragon that can identify with our business the best. Hello Dragons, my name's Sarah and this is my business partner Beth. We're here today to pitch for 78,000 in return 15% of our company, Iverson and Sage. With a combined 13 years of experience between Sarah and I in the fashion industry, we really noticed two emerging gaps within the high street market. One being that there's no brand or retailer solely focusing on fashionable yet affordable workwear. So we created Ulta, and Ulta is a range of kind of trend pieces ranging from like shirts to blazers to trousers to jumpsuits, all with that little fashion edge to it to bring it to life. And the other, that no occasion wear brand is really focusing on beautifully embroidered pieces. Hope and Ivy is a brand I've always dreamed of creating, especially my passion for print and embroidery. We started our business in October of last year, and within four weeks we had our first order of £130,000 with online retailer ASOS. That was swiftly followed by a second order of £120,000, again with ASOS. It's been five months since our first orders went in, and it's been a complete whirlwind. And since then, we've grossed £530,000 worth of sales, and we're currently about a 28% profit margin with that. And to top it off, Next and Lipsy are now really interested in taking on Alter for the autumn winter season. So that's a little snapshot of us and our brands, and we welcome you to come and have a look at the product if you want. A model pitch from Sarah Slightholm and Beth Chilton, who are seeking £78,000 for a 15% stake in their profitable fashion range. Beautiful. Mm. Uh, Deborah and Sarah, I know that, you know... We've... I'm shopping. <laughs> I'm just, just going to try... Have you got this in a second? <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. A positive early reaction to the product from Deborah Meaden and Sarah Willingham. Thanks, Thank you. But will the business be on trend for Peter Jones? When you first came in and I saw this, I have to say I thought they were quite dour colours, was my first impression. And then... Yeah. You started taking through the figures of the business, mm -hmm. and it's outstanding, the success you've had so quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Half a million pounds in just five months. Can I firstly know a little bit more about your backgrounds? Well, I studied fashion at uni, and then um, I worked at ASOS, actually, for three years. My degree was in fashion management. And then from there, I went to Topshop, went to a kind of a startup brand, um, and then that's where we met. We just went, you know what, if we don't do it now, we'll, we'll never, never do it. it. And if Let's we're going to do, do it, it, we're going to go as fast yeah. as possible and get it and achieve as high yeah. as we can. The figures are a fit for Peter Jones. Now, Sarah Willingham wants to get to grips with how they plan to spend their investment. Why 78 is quite a specific number. It's basically to help put a bit more money into the cash flow and then just help with like overheads um, and then we want to start a bit of money. Marketing. It'd be good to spend about £28,000 on marketing, but when we say marketing in our industry, it's all about bloggers. You know, bloggers are bigger than celebrities and if you get the right bloggers, you know, on Instagram that girls love to follow, we need to just kind of capture the bloggers that the girls like. OK, so that's the idea of yeah. growing the brand. You become known for who you are and people come direct to your yeah. website yes. to do it. So far, the entrepreneurs haven't put a foot wrong. Impressive turnover and those all-important industry credentials. But the Fashion Forward talk has left greetings card guru Nick Jenkins feeling out on a limb. No, actually, I have to say, it looks like, a, it looks like you've done a great job of setting up a, a really good business, but I, I, just, I just have no knowledge of this sector whatsoever, so I'm afraid I, uh, I know what, it's, what you want is experience. 
and I can't really offer that in this case, but wish you all the best luck that I'm out. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was quick, wasn't it? That was it? really quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not to the point. A swift exit from Nick Jenkins, citing lack of industry insight. But it's the dragon with global fashion form who Sarah and Beth set out to impress. Hi. Hi. And a little bit about clothing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a retailer, I'm a manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Uh, we fabric source, we do everything. Mm -hmm. So I know all the pitfalls. You've got lots of energy, mm -hmm. you're very credible, you've got one customer, you've got ASOS as your main customer. Mm -hmm. So your biggest risk mm -hmm. at the moment is your relationship that you've got at the moment mm -hmm. is with a particular buyer. Yep. And, and if, if, for instance, that buyer gets moved on to another department, yep. you're in trouble. The retail is very tough at the moment. You know, it's very tough out there. It is the worst retail period the industry has known for 40 years. This is not unique. I think you've been lucky up to now. A shock reaction from the textile tycoon, who is underwhelmed by their designs and critical of their customer base. Has it left Peter Jones questioning his earlier optimism? Tuca's been in this game for a long time, probably most of his adult life. What I heard him saying was that you haven't done very well and actually anybody could do this. Mm -hmm. But I didn't hear you defend yourself and you um, were almost, no, almost accepting uh, of it. No, and I, was I think shocked. I was just kind of... Well, we wouldn't be here if we didn't yep, believe, believe in what it. we do. We wouldn't it's... have come to you guys if we feel that we're selling a product that's not worthy of being sellable. We know that it's sellable. Yeah. People want it, they want it now. I don't think it was lucky. If anybody's going to make this business work, you've got all the stuff inside yeah, it yeah. who can do it. So I, you know, yeah. I, yeah. I don't think it's luck. So yeah. I'm going to ask you a different question. Mm -hmm. What's your, you know, who, who do you want to roll out to? I always say, I always want the top, you know, the top six people we're going yeah. for next. Yeah. I want that list on that wall because we should be working our way through it. So what's your plan? We wanted Lipsy, and we're going to Lipsy. And next. Uh, and next. Yep. And then I think very... And then maybe even looking at the higher end of the market, maybe like even net a And then even looking like internationally, retailers like Zalando, um, like Nelly. Nelly, like Nasty Girl would love all the embroidered kind of pieces. We just want to create two amazing, amazing brands. The fashion industry duo deftly deal with Deborah Meaden. But it appears they have a long way to go before Tuka Suleiman is satisfied. You're not focused. Mm -hmm. You've got two brands there. You're going to double your costs of marketing. You're going to double your costs of website. You're going to double all your costs. You're a startup. And already you're, you're, you're stretching yourselves very wide. You're better off focusing on one brand. But I don't know how we can stop something that's doing so well. So that's why we really just want well, both, and they're both succeeding so well. Okay, I've seen it before. Okay. And, uh, and to me, two brands, two websites, you're in for a disaster. <laughs> the blows just keep on coming as Tuka Suleiman makes another damning assessment of Beth and Sarah's business. Will the retail tycoon's criticism exert any influence over fellow high street magnate Peter Jones? Uh, this is very, very difficult. Um, Tuka's made some really good points, hasn't he? Um, yeah. He knows the industry really well, so th th those sort of points have a major influence on me. Of course. Um, I was waiting to see whether he's being cleverly tactical by just talking and it's just noise. And putting us <laughs> off. And then putting us off. But regardless, we are clearly all individuals and we make our own decisions. I have a business, I don't know, have you heard of Farrell or come across Farrell with Robbie yeah. Williams? Yeah. I own half of that company. We sell millions and millions of pounds worth of product and it's the most successful brand in Primark. Oh, wow. Even with what Tuka is saying, if I invest, could I make a difference? And could I do almost what Tuka is describing is potentially impossible and help you turn this into a great business? I think I can. Wow, thank you. So I'm going to make you an offer because 
I think you have done a great job. Um, so I'm going to offer you all of the money mm -hmm. for 25% of the business. Peter Jones' revelation of a stake in a profitable high street clothing range wrong foots to Kasuliman. He's offering all of the money, but for 10% more equity than the entrepreneurs wanted to give away. Is Sarah Willingham poised to up the ante? Similarly, Tuka hasn't completely put me off. I mean, I've, I've heard everything he said and thought, but look at the last five months. Hopefully he's creating a red herring. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's really, really good. So I, I'm also going to make you an offer. Um, and I'd be very happy to split it with another dragon. I'll make you an offer for all of the money for 25%. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you can pay that money back, mm -hmm. Um, I'm very happy to drop back down to 15% that you originally came in and asked for. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Sarah Willingham joins Peter Jones in dismissing Tuka Suleiman's steer, offering the entrepreneurs a buyback deal that matches their preferred 15% stake. Deborah Meaden has yet to declare her hand. Will she raise the stakes even higher? I do not pretend to compete with the knowledge to my right or even Peter's more recent knowledge. I can bring in the fashion expertise, but I won't pretend to have the same setup that these guys have got. So for that, I'm going to offer you all of the money for 20% of the business. OK, thank you. OK. Oh, and I'm happy to share. A collection of deals to choose from. But it's the dragon with over 40 years' experience in global retail Beth and Sarah came to bag. So far, he's lambasted their labels and bashed their business model. Time to find out if he's been playing the den all along. OK. <laughs> um, I know what's involved. Mm -hmm. I know what you need. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of energy, to make this into a proper business. Yep. I think the 78 grand is not going to go very far. Um... I'll make you an offer for all the money, but I want 40%. Strategic play from Tuka Suleiman. Finally, the entrepreneurs get an offer from the dragon they came for. But his expertise comes at a cost, 40% of the business. Will this ultimately be too high a price to pay for the design duo? Oh, should we go and do the thing at the back of the room? Yeah. Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? <laughs> it's a tough call. Four dragons at Sarah and Beth's disposal. Sarah Willingham's offering 78,000 for a 25% stake and a buyback deal. I think to save Deborah and uh, Peter will split. Deborah Meaden wants 20% of the business for the same cash. And Peter Jones offers his own fashion expertise in exchange for 25% of the business. Considerably less than the 40% that High Street clothing magnate Tuka Suleiman is seeking. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's discuss. That's all right. There we go. So I'd like to see if, um, Peter, you'd um, go in with Deborah. At all on the offer. And that is that at my 25%, so 12.5% each? Yeah, and then if we hit our targets, would you lower that to then 20% and when we repay back your original investment? So I'd end up with 10%? Yeah. To be clear, though, that would mean that I would give you half of the money for 12.5%, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and when I'd received that money back, I would drop down to 10%, mm -hmm, and yeah. likewise, so would Deborah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would accept that offer if Deborah would. I'd be, I'd be happy to. Be delighted to, actually. Thank you. Oh, well done. <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Have we got a deal? Do, yeah. We've got a deal. Yay! Yay. Uh, hey, hey. 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 We do this now. We're in business together. Thank you so oh, well. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. <laughs> 
Sarah and Beth exit the den, having deftly negotiated a competitive deal with not one, but two dragons. Congratulations. <laughs> Tuka, I knew you were up to something. I knew you were going to make an offer. When Tuka was kind of really questioning it, we're kind of like, oh, maybe he doesn't believe in where we are today. Well done. However, there's a lot of work to be done. Sorry, I stopped at the however. Whereas Peter and Deborah's reaction was just great. Two dragons. Two dragons. Price of one. Yeah. <laughs> so it's great. <laughs>